Now coming to the functional anatomy of respiratory system. Here we will not be dealing about the intricate lobes of the respiratory system that will be dealt in anatomy, but what are the functional divisions? So the functional division, the airflow regions include the upper airways, then the conducting airways, then the alveolar airways. What is upper airway? It is nothing but a nose as well as the pharynx region. So this nose and the pharynx will go for upper airways. Then comes the conducting airway. As the name suggests, what happens in the conducting airway? In the conducting airway, only the air is conducted. There is no gaseous exchange. That's why this airway is called as conducting airway. Then comes to the alveolar airway. This alveolar airway is, is the one which is involved in gaseous exchange. So this is involved in gaseous exchange. And both the conducting airway and the alveolar airway has various generations. Generations means it is just the divisions. They are dividing into many, many divisions. So that has been given nicely by classification called as Weibel's classification. So the Weibel classification starts from 1 to 23. The classification includes number 1 to 23 divisions. Basically, whenever we enter into the respiratory system, it is divided into many divisions and finally ending up in the alveolar sac. These divisions are given the classification of Weibel. This has two predominant zones that is the conducting zone and the respiratory zone. What is conducting zone? I have already told you it is just conducting the air. And this includes the first 16 divisions. As you can see here, the first 16 are nothing but the conducting zone. This conducting zone is further divided into the bronchi and terminal bronchioles. The first 10 divisions are the bronchi and the next 11 to 16 is the terminal bronchioles. So the question can be asked, where does the conducting zone end? The conducting zone ends at the level of terminal bronchioles. So this can be asked as a question. Then from the 16th generation, it is going up to the 23rd generation. In that, the gaseous exchange is taking place. So it is also called as alveolar airway zone or respiratory zone. It includes the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct and alveolar sac. Now the second question can be asked, where the respiration begins, in which zone the respiration begins or which terminal the respiration begins. All of us think that the answer is alveolar sac. It is not alveolar sac. The respiration begins even at the level of respiratory bronchioles. So the answer for this question is it is respiratory bronchioles because the respiratory bronchioles, as you can see in this diagram, I have marked A, B and C. This A is for the respiratory bronchioles, then B is for the alveolar duct, C is for the alveolar sac. Even at the part A, even at the respiratory bronchioles A, what is happening is it will have alveolar sacs. It is having alveolar sacs which is capable of gaseous exchange. So that is the reason this respiratory bronchiole is the one where the respiration begins. Now coming to the cells in the respiratory tracts. Basically, the cells in the respiratory tracts are divided into cells in the conducting zone and cells in the alveolar zone. This cells in the alveolar zone is very, very, very important. Now cells in the conducting zone, there are several cells. I will tell you the importance of each of them. First coming to the cell group, that is the basal cell. The basal cell is the stem cell of the respiratory tract. Whenever any epithelia is getting damaged, it has to be replaced. So that is done with the help of these same cells called as the basal cells. Then coming to the goblet cells. The goblet cells are the ones which secrete mucus all over the body. Wherever you read goblet cells, it has only one function that is the mucus secretions. Then coming to the brush cells, this is the one which is involved in lung defense mechanism as well as it is acting like a sensory chemoreceptors. Suppose any inhaled foreign material is there, it has to be sensed by the respiratory tract and it is done with the help of brush cells. And coming to the most important cell, which is also called as an MCQ cell, the club cells are chlora cells. Previously it was called chlora cells, now it is called as club cells. This is involved in secretion of an important protein, that is surfactant protein. We will deal extensively with surfactant, but right now remember chlora cells is the one which is going to produce the surfactant protein. Then the final cells, that is the neuroepithelial cells. This is also called as Klutsky cells, which is involved in carcinoid tumors. So this is also important. Coming to the alveolar epithelial cells. This is where the MCQs are constantly asked. 
There are two types of alveolar epitheliuses. The simple to remember, it is type 1 and type 2. What is the only major function of all the lungs? All the lung alveoli, they have to be involved in gaseous exchange. Ultimately, we need the oxygen to go inside the body. That's why this type 1 cell which is involved in gaseous exchange is covering 95% of the surface epithelium. Majorly, it is covering the surface epithelium which is involved in gaseous exchange. But to our MCQ points, we are concerned with the type 2. Why type 2? Because it is producing two most important substances inside the lung. That is the alpha 1 antitrypsin and the surfactant. The surfactant's importance, we will see it. Then it is covering the 5 percentage of surface epithelium. Now let us talk about the alpha 1 antitrypsin. This alpha 1 antitrypsin, it is clinically also very important because whenever there is a deficiency of this protein, what is going to happen? There will be an early onset of emphysema. Even in an young age, the person might get emphysema. That is why this deficiency is very, very important. What is this alpha 1 antitrypsin? If you ask me in simple terms, it is just a serine protease inhibitor. So, it is inhibited in some serine protease. So, what will be the function? Le now, let us see. There is one elastase, which is a dangerous guy. He is constantly damaging the pulmonary epithelium. If the neutrophil elastase is very active, he is going to damage the pulmonary epithelium. So, what as lung we have to do? We have to go and inhibit this neutrophil elastase. Who is doing that? The alpha-1 antitrypsin, which is a serine protein inhibitor. If I am able to inhibit this, what is going to happen? The destruction of pulmonary epithelium is going to come down. Whenever the destruction of pulmonary epithelium now is not happening, it is protective to the lung. But in its deficiency, there will be an early onset of emphysema. And even in smokers, what happens is there is deficiency of this alpha-1 antitrypsin leading on to the emphysema, which we see in smokers. Now, coming to the another protein which is secreted also by the type 2 cells, the surfactant. Uh, so, now coming to the discussion of surfactant. The surfactant is also secreted by the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells. The surfactant has composition which is 90 percentage lipids and 10 percentage of proteins. And these proteins are nothing but the surfactant protein A, B, C and D. And the most important component which is also the most important MCQ that is nothing but the DPPC. What is this DPPC? This DPPC is dipalmitol phosphatidyl choline. So, this can be asked in various options. It can be given in the option like what is the surfactant protein secreted by the most common surfactant protein secreted by the alveolar cells. It is DPPC. It can be given as choline also in the option as well as it can be given in the option like lecithin. Both of it can be given in the option. So, go for lecithin or the DPPC. Now, coming to the function of surfactant. So, what is the important function of surfactant? All of you know that it reduces the surface tension. So, it is reducing the surface tension. Before understanding like it is reducing surface tension, what is surface tension? So, this surface tension is the tension which is at the surface of the air-water interface. So, whenever there is an air-water interface, that is one side air is there, another side water is there. On the surface between them, there is some tension. So, that is surface tension. Why this surface tension happens? This is nothing but the physics. Whenever the molecules which are inside, what will happen is all the sides it is being pulled by the neighboring molecules like here. We have four arrows and all the sides. So, the pressure on all of them will be neutralized. But think of what is happening at the surface level. On the surface level, there is no water molecule above it to pull the molecules. So, what will happen? There will be a pull sideways and there will be a pull downwards. And this sideways pull and the downwards pull that will create a surface kind of feeling and that will create a tension on the surface. Even some small mosquitoes and small insects, they walk on the water because there is some tension which is sustaining their weight. Even of course, uh, humans cannot do it because our size is very huge. Whenever what the surfactant is going to do now, this surfactant, what it is going to do is, it is going to insert itself inside the water molecules. So, what will happen? The air, air water interface is interrupted. So, it breaks the water column. So, whenever this water column is broken, what will happen to the surface tension? Obviously, the surface tension is reduced. And the substances which is increasing the surfactant production is important because it is used in the treatment also. 
द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सब्सटेंस विच इज इंक्रीजिंग द सर्फेक्टेंट इज ग्लूकोकॉटिकॉइड्स दिस ग्लूकोकॉटिकॉइड्स इंक्रीज द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ सर्फेक्टेंट then comes the thyroid hormone then comes the thyroid releasing hormone all of them are increasing it what is going to decrease the surfactant the surfactant will be decreased by high insulin levels and cigarette smoking cigarette smoking reduces the surfactant levels also so what will happen the surface tension in the alveoli is going to increase and that will cause the collapse of the alveoli i don't want the alveoli to collapse because once the collapse alveoli is there to reopen it we need a tremendous pressure this is what happens during childbirth what happens in childbirth because the child's alveoli are not developed all of them are in a collapsed state so to open it up that's why the child is crying with its loud crying uh, during the birth because the surface tension is huge and it has collapsed alveoli i need huge pressure to open it cigarette smokers if they constantly do it what will happen is their alveoli will go for and collapse and it will take more pressure to release it or open it then 100% oxygen inhalation oxygen we might think that it is good but even a 100% oxygen inhalation will decrease the production of surfactant proteins this surfactant protein is deficient in one group of people that is the premature babies because the baby has to mature inside the mother and its corticosteroid level should reach a minimal quantity for the maturation of lung if the baby is born prematurely what will happen the lungs of the baby are not mature and they are they will have a surfactant deficiency so what will happen it will lead to collapse of the alveoli this disorder is called as infant respiratory distress syndrome the infant is in a huge distress it is also called as hyaline membrane disease because the membrane of the lung of the infant will become something like hyaline corticosteroids in them then what is the treatment if the baby is born already what can we do we can give an exogenous surfactant from the outside so exogenous surfactant can be given but is there any prevention like before the baby is born we are thinking that this may baby might get delivered prematurely or there is some emergency that the baby has to be delivered prematurely so what can we do anticipating we can give the mother injection beta methasone this is given to the mother and injection or injection dexamethasone this beta methasone and dexamethasone both of them are nothing but the corticosteroids so this has been constantly asked in mcqs what is the treatment for the premature infant that is the prevention for the premature infant and what is the treatment of a premature infant which is born with irds this is also called as irds infant respiratory distress syndrome so this is all about our functional anatomy of the respiratory system